Hello and welcome back to my channel Cells and Genes. So today I will explain about the titration curve of amino acid with ionizable groups. In my previous video I have explained the titration curve of or titration of amino acid with non ionizable groups. So I have listed down some amino acids over here. They are glutamic acid, aspartic acid, lysine, arginine and histidine. They all have in common they have three ionizable groups. So uh, three ionizable groups means they have one alpha uh, carboxylic group, alpha amino group and in the R side chain they have an extra ionizable group. It can be positively charged or negatively charged. Okay. So three ionizable groups means they have three pK values. So they have pK1, they have pK2 and pKr for the ionizable group in the R side chain of that amino acid. So what is PI? PI is the isoelectric point or the pH at which the amino acid has a net charge is equal to 0. And how we calculate the PI? We calculate the PI by the average of pK below and pK above. Okay, what is pK below? It is uh, the pK which is responsible for the amino acid charge moving from plus 1 to 0 and pK above is the pK responsible for the amino acid charge moving from 0 to minus 1. So I will explain in a detailed way using the titration uh, of uh, some amino acids. So we will uh, look into that. Now let us see the titration of glutamic acid. So this is the structure of glutamic acid. This is the alpha carbon. Okay, this is the alpha carbon and to which the carboxylic group and amino group is attached and we have an R side chain CH2, CH2, COOH. So this is the ionizable group over here. And uh, when we look into this uh, structure of glutamic acid, we could see that it is in a fully protonated form. Okay, so we have uh, a positive charge over here. This amino group is having a positive charge. So what is the charge of this uh, amino acid? It is plus 1. So pK1 is the responsible or pk1 is responsible for the deprotonation of this carboxylic group okay this uh, cooh becomes coo minus then it, the charge of this amino acid become zero okay now pkr is responsible for the deprotonation of this carboxylic group in the side chain and here it becomes coo minus and here the charge is minus 1 because minus and plus it cancel out and the balance is minus 1. So here we have the charge minus 1. Now consider in the pK2 which is responsible for the deprotonation of this amino group and it renders an H2 over here. So now we look into the charge of the amino acid we have minus 2 1 over here for this alpha carboxylic and the other in the side chain. So the charge is minus 2. So for determining the PI we have to look for the pK values that is responsible for the charge of amino acid from plus 1 to 0 and then 0 to minus 1. This is what I have told before. So the PI values, the pK values for determining the PI value, they are pK1 which is responsible for the moving of the charge from plus 1 to 0 that is 2.19 and the pKr is responsible or this value pK value is responsible for the amino acid charge from 0 to minus 1 that is 4.25 okay we'll determine the pI value by the average of pK1 and pKr that is uh, pK1 is 2.19 and pKr is 4.25 divided by 2. So we have the pI value 3.22 for glutamic acid. Now coming to the graph we could see the pK1 value is over here and the isoelectric point here it is the isoelectric point where we can see the sweeter ion where there is no charge the charge is equal to zero and the pkr value is over here where 
it is moving from 0 to minus 1. So, these values are important to determine the PI value. Now, let us see the titration of histidine. So, uh, seeing the structure of histidine, we could say that it has an alpha carboxylic group, alpha amino group. This is the alpha carbon, okay. So, to which all these amino and carboxylic group is attached. And here they have the R side chain group and it is also having a NH plus or the uh, side chain amino group is also over here. And uh, seeing the structure, we could say that it is in a fully protonated form and it has two positive charges over here and one over here. So the charge or the net charge of this uh, histidine is plus two. The PK1 is responsible for the decarboxylic, uh, deprotonation of this uh, carboxylic uh, acid, okay, this carboxylic group and um, it becomes COO minus. Now the charge becomes plus 1. Now PKR is responsible for the deprotonation of this amino group and here it renders N. Okay, so it will lose its proton and uh, now looking into the charge it we could say that it has a minus charge and it has a plus charge so the charge net charge is equal to zero that is uh, when the net charge it is zero that amino acid is called or it is in a dipolar ion state or it is in a sweater uh, it is called as a sweater ion now the, this PK2 is responsible for the deprotonation of this amino group and it becomes NH2 from NH3 plus it becomes NH2 and seeing the charge of this uh, amino acid we could say that it is having minus 1. So as I have discussed earlier to find out the PI we have to look the PK values that is moving from okay PK values that is moving from the charge is moving from C plus 1 to 0 so that is PKR over here and the other charge of that amino acid so the other PK value is the charge moving from 0 to minus 1 that is PK2 so we'll find out the value of a uh, the isoelectric point by PKR and PK2 adding PKR plus PK2 divided by 2. Now one more thing considering the PKR value we could see that it is 6 it is close to 6 that is it is having a, a buffering power okay it is a significant uh, um, uh, buffering uh, uh, power which is close to the um, P, a neutral pH okay neutral pH so is this can vary uh, this histidine has a uh, variable uh, this uh, uh, it can variable PKR values uh, uh, depending on the position inside the protein and it is also uh, important in a physiological process we can also find lot of histidine uh, residues at the uh, catalytic site of proteins so this is uh, one of the interesting fact of uh, histidine now coming to the PI value, we could calculate a PKR plus PK2 by 2 that is 6 plus 9.17 divided by 2 we get 7.6 as the PI value. So the PI for the histidine is 7.6. Now let us see the PI values for some amino acids. We have a positively charged amino acid, we are negatively charged, uh, the amino acid with non-ionizable groups. Okay, So all these amino acids have PI values. So when we titrate the amino acid with the PI values, we should uh, give the equation PI is equal to pk1 plus pk2 divided by 2 and as i told mentioned before pk1 is for alpha carboxylic pk2 is for alpha amino group since it, they don't have a pkr uh, uh, pkr values we calculate the average of pk1 and pk2 now consider the positively charged amino acid like lysine histidine and arginine we get pi is equal to pkr plus pk2 we'll take the values of pk2 and we take the values of pkr in case of positively charged amino acid we uh, calculated the titration curve or titration of uh, histidine uh, in the previous section and now we also calculated the negatively charged uh, r group amino acid aspartate and glutamate so the pi value is pk1 
so we have the pk1 over here and we have the pkr value so we take these values and calculate the pi so this is the uh, a negatively charged R group, they have an extra carboxylic group in their R, R side chain group. So uh, we calculate uh, the PI value in this method. And this is end of today's class. I hope you understood it very well. So if you have any doubts, uh, please do comment it down. If you like my video, please hit the like button and do share my video. And please do not uh, forget to subscribe my channel for future updates. Thank you. Have a good day.